Good morning and welcome to Crofton Park Baptist Church. My name is Clement Toke and I'm part of the leadership team here at Crofton Park Baptist Church. I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, broadcast. We're currently recording this, actually. I am currently recording this um, on a Thursday. So by the time you watch this on Sunday, it might be a little bit cooler and a bit more comfortable for you to be able to watch and enjoy the service indoors. Now I know we are, uh, nation that likes to discuss the weather. I think that's a polite way of saying complain about almost everything. And today's service is a pre-recorded message um, which is about having joy in the midst of all the things that we're going through. I think it's actually a quite a good um, message and although it was recorded back in about February or so at the uh, beginning or the height of the lockdown, I think it's quite relevant that we listen to it and pay attention to it today because over the past four or five months we've been um, experiencing worship in this online digital way and it's not been to everybody's liking but from the video that you will see later on in the um, in this service you'll be able to understand and relate to people who for them this is a way of life but i'll let the video do its own speaking so for now, I'd like to ask everyone watching right now to be in that state where we're prepared to worship, where we've come to worship. So although you might be holding a mug of tea and being in your pyjamas, um, let's come to worship our Lord and our Saviour and our Father in Heaven. So I'm going to start now by reading a few Psalms, just a few verses. And my first is from psalm 9 and it's verses 1 to 2 and it says i will give thanks to the lord with my whole heart i will recount of all your wonderful deeds i will be glad and exult in you i will sing praise to your name o most high and from psalm 66 verses 1 to 4 shout for joy to god all the earth sing the glory of his name Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Let us pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we sing praises to your name, Lord, from deep within our hearts. We give you glory for this day that you've made. We give you thanks. We worship you, Lord. And we pray that as we come to you today to hear your word, to be together, even if it's virtually, we pray, Father Lord, that you will enter our hearts, that you will remove the distractions so that we can focus on what it is that you have for us this week. So we can focus on the bread of life that you're about to feed us. We pray, Father Lord, that all those who watch this service, Lord, today will be blessed, that each and every one of us will take something away that we can use this week, whether it's to comfort ourselves or to comfort others or to be encouraged or to strengthen our belief in you, Lord, in your faithfulness. All of this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be watching a video for Sat7. Sat7 is a satellite channel that broadcasts to Christians in the Middle East and North Africa. And this is their only lifeline um, to hear the word of God, to be able to worship, to be able to receive words of encouragement. And as the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, we should rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, 
and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So before we listen to the message, we're going to hear our first song, which is Hosanna, Praise is Rising. I hope that wherever you're watching this, you can sing along and that you feel the lyrics and the music in your heart. Hi, my name is Martin Thomas and I'm Director of Engagement with SAT7 UK. You may be watching this live during an online Sunday service, an evening home group, or perhaps you're listening on your own. Wherever you are, thank you for wanting to know more about SAT7 today. Now, finding space in our busy society has never been easy. And in the midst of the current crisis, many of us continue to live with numerous demands, competing for our attention, our time, our space. Today, I want to give space for us to hear the voices of believers from across the Middle East and North Africa, but also to give space to the voice of God. So I'd like to start by reading some verses from the Psalms. Psalm 130, verse one to two says this, out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. 
and in Psalm 126 verse 3 we read, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. I wonder which verse do you relate to more? What have you been crying out to God for? Can you point to one or more great things that God has done, perhaps during this time? Can you say today, with everything going on in your personal, family or church lives, or in the reality of what's going on in the UK and wider world, that you are filled with joy? Well, if you find it hard to feel full of joy, or to even say those words out loud or in your head, I want to say today that it's okay. Many of us are more often distracted or shaped by uncertainty and the struggle of daily life, work, money, health and relationships. I spent most of January struggling to breathe with asthma and a collapsed lung. And it's the reason why I'm recording this message for you today from the safety of my attic in Whitney, having been asked by our amazing NHS to shield for at least three months. And it's into this context of uncertainty that I want to share today about SAT7. However, I'm also here to talk about us and to ask us a question about the depth and resilience of our discipleship and what it means to live out our Christian faith and values in a world that's changing so fast, in a world that's increasingly so unpredictable, in a world that for so many is so often dangerous and full of fear. It's into that context that I want us to start by looking at these words, conflict, poverty, persecution and despair. These are words you probably associate with the Middle East, and that's hardly surprising. Christians in the region face daily challenges you can only begin to imagine. The Arab Spring Uprises that started at the end of 2010 sparked protests, political unrest, revolutions and wars that continue to reverberate across the region to this day. The civil war in Syria and the refugee crisis has been the most dominant in our news, but other countries such as Yemen, Iraq and Libya have also been devastated by conflict. Incredibly, the Arab world sees 45% of global terrorist attacks and 68% of all battle-related deaths and has created 57% of the world's refugees. It is a region in turmoil it's also a very difficult place for Christians to live in. Christians now only make up 3.5% of the population. The decline having been driven by wars, persecution, the dominance of Islam and a lack of employment opportunities. And when we see the news from this turbulent region, we can feel completely hopeless and wonder, where is God in all of this? But despair is only part of the picture. There is another story being told, and it's a story of Christians from Egypt, Iran, Syria, Algeria, Lebanon, from all across the region, discovering joy. How? Through something perhaps unexpected, their television. Sat7 is a Christian ministry that uses satellite TV and digital media to bring hope and joy directly into the homes of millions of people who are desperate for good news. There are 470 million satellite TV viewers across the Middle East and North Africa. That's 84% of the MENA population. And amazingly, Sat7 reaches more than 25 million people across the region through our four channels, broadcasting a range of high quality programs made specially by local Christian media professionals in Turkish, Farsi and Arabic. Millions of people are watching online too, and every day hundreds of our viewers get in touch with Sat7 via email, phone, Skype and messaging apps to ask questions, give feedback on programmes, share their testimonies and ask for prayer. So, let's take a little look 
on TV. The Middle East and North Africa, a region rich in culture, amazing people and natural beauty. It is also a place of turmoil, war, struggle and oppression. People are searching desperately for hope and change. Sat7 is a Christian media network that uses uncensored satellite television to broadcast across the Middle East and North Africa and is also available globally online. Our purpose is to share the Christian message and to support and empower the local church in its life, work, and witness for Christ. We broadcast around the clock over multiple channels in Arabic, Turkish, and Farsi. Our programs include Christian dramas, movies, and talk shows, inspirational teaching, documentaries, and church services to encourage believers. Our kids' channel is widely recognized by Arab parents from all backgrounds as a safe place for their children. Sat7 Academy is providing educational programs for millions of displaced and refugee children in the Arab world. Our programming is positive, holistic, and making a difference. We operate almost entirely on donations. For less than one pound per viewer per year, we bring hope to one of the world's most troubled regions. Hundreds contact us every day, sharing stories of how they've received hope through our programs. We broadcast over borders into millions of homes. Our vision is to see transformed lives and a growing church throughout the Middle East and North Africa. As we have been in lockdown, many of us have experienced for the first time being a part of church online, using Facebook or YouTube to worship, listening to podcasts for teaching, and connecting by Zoom. But for many people, Sat7 is their only source of Christian teaching and fellowship and for over 20 years has been a lifeline for the region's Christians. I want to focus for a moment on Iran and our channel for the Persian-speaking world, Sat7 Pars. Yasmin, a mother from Iran, said this to us. Every time I feel weak and lonely, I call you, and every time that you pray for me, I am strengthened. You are the only joy that I have right now. Thank you for helping those of us who do not have access to any church or other believers. You will have seen the troubling, shocking news from Iran this year. Escalating tension with the US, violent protests, the disturbing downing of a passenger jet and the huge outbreak of COVID-19. It's hard to see beyond despair, but I'm here to tell you that there are more Christian believers in Iran than at any time in modern history. Thousands are seeking Jesus. They're choosing joy in the midst of despair. And since the beginning of 2020, we've had so many calls and messages from fearful and anxious Iranian Christians. Many believers in Iran are completely alone, as oppression stops Christians from meeting together openly. Mirzad has been a Christian for five years, but doesn't know a single believer in his hometown. He told us this. Like many believers in Iran, I'm isolated. There are other Christians, but because of the threat of persecution, they prefer not to make themselves known. These brothers and sisters of ours in Iran are desperate. In these dark times, they need the light of God's love, and Sat7 TV is that lifeline. And it can completely transform people's lives. People like Hamid. Hamid was abused by some religious leaders when he was 18, and it destroyed him. He turned to alcohol and drugs to forget his pain. But he lost his job and became depressed. Hamid was at rock bottom when he happened to tune into Sat7. The presenter, Pastor Milton, was a former drug addict, and his powerful testimony stopped Hamid in his tracks. Hamid's story is told for you today by supporters recorded last year at New Wine. Drug abuse and alcohol dependence are widespread in Iran, yet Sat7 hears many testimonies from viewers who, through Christ, have been set free from addiction. One of those is Hamid, whose newfound joy was so noticeable well, that it prompted, prompted questions, questions from, from a co-worker. 
I was an alcoholic for 13 years. It was, it was only, only after, after I came, came to faith, faith that, that I thought, thought something, something needed, needed to change. change. I've been a believer now for just over a year and, and I'm, I'm now, now free, free from, from addiction. Whenever I used to think of my alcoholic past, I, I felt, felt sorry, sorry for losing the most beautiful, beautiful years, years of my, my life. life. But during this past year, it has been proven to me that the most beautiful days of my life have, have started, started from the day I repented and prayed my confession to the Lord. I've shared three very short testimonies from Yasmin, Mirzad and Hamid. Do their stories challenge you? Do they fill you with joy? Do you have stories like theirs to share? In John 11, verse 21 to 27, in the context of Lazarus having died, we read these heartbreaking words. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into the world. When we look back on this period, I wonder how we will describe this time. In this passage, we heard the pain of Martha, having just lost Lazarus. We've all been hearing of people who have died, and the pain of their families of not being allowed to be at their side, not being able to be at a funeral, or to grieve together as a family. And perhaps there are many around the world asking God today, if you had been here, my brother, sister, mum, dad, doctor, nurse, would not have died. We live in this tension between the now and the not yet, of knowing in our heads a theology of a future resurrection joy, while struggling on a daily basis to find this new kingdom to live in, in the here and now. I know I do. Before lockdown, I asked some of our supporters, how would they cope if like Merzad, they couldn't meet or worship with other Christians? If they were to get cut off from support and fellowship, if they were completely isolated and alone? Well, perhaps we've discovered just a little of what that feels like. How have we coped physically, emotionally, spiritually? Have we given in to fear or have we grown in faith? Have we found comfort in the words of Jesus that he is indeed the resurrection and the life? Have we found a life-changing joy even in the midst of despair? And that's what Sat7 brings to millions of people every day, life-changing moments of joy. And we're still dedicated to broadcast live, powerful, faithful television programs and to still make God's love visible to all people, even in the midst of a global pandemic. Now, if you already support us, I want to say thank you, especially for praying and giving at this time, because it means so much and is so valued by our viewers. But I also really believe that the testimonies from the lives of Christians from across the Middle East have so much to say to us today, to help us go deeper in our own faith. And that's why even before COVID-19, we produced a free Joy in the Midst photo book last year, printed through the generosity of a supporter, that we feel is an inspirational resource, and even more so at a time like this. It's really hard not to be with you 
to be able to share more personally in the service and then afterwards over coffee. But I would love to give you all the opportunity today to deepen your own faith through the stories of Christians from the Middle East. Normally, if I were with you at church, I'd invite the worship group to come and play quietly whilst we reflected and prayed together about our response. For now, I just want to leave you with a few options which will appear on your screen and if your church is hosting a service today, they may be able to put the links in the comments. The easiest way to get your Join the Myths book is to go online and fill in a form. Or you can simply send us a text message now with the word JOY to 87800. We'll get back in touch in the next few weeks to take down your details so we can send you your book. And if you'd like to help us keep broadcasting live, especially to Iranian Christians at this time, you can also give today to our appeal for Iran. Thank you so much for listening today. To close, let's remind ourselves once again of the Bible verses that opened our time together. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. And the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. May God give us peace and patience as we wait, but especially for joy today and in the days to come. Amen. I do hope that message touched you and that you can empathize with those who on a daily basis the only way they can hear the word of god is through the airways digitally and not face to face for fear of persecution we thank god that we're in a country where we're not persecuted overtly for believing in jesus christ so now let's hear the song oceans where feet may fail.
Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me when my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior lead us in our prayers of intercession. And this morning I'll be focusing on our students, those who have received and will be receiving their results of the examinations and preparing to go back to school. Uh, I'd also like to pray for people in countries where the pandemic is raging and they do not have the facilities or the um, health infrastructure to be able to cope. I'm thinking in particular of um, Ecuador. Having listened to a program this morning on Radio 4 Crossing Continents as I was coming to record this, where there were stories of people dying and their bodies not being collected for days and just mounting up in a city in Ecuador. It's harrowing stuff. I'd also as well like to pray for Belarus and Hong Kong. Let us pray. Father, Lord Almighty, you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. We thank you that we can come to you in prayer, that we can ask you of anything, Lord, through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you will grant it to us. So this morning, Lord, in faith, we ask, Father Lord, that you encourage and bless all the children, all the young adults who will be receiving or have received their exam results. They may be worried, they may be upset, that maybe it's not what they're expecting. They may be worried whether those grades will get them to the school or the university that they had planned to go to. But we know, Father, that you can turn every situation to good. So I pray, Father Lord, that out of this pandemic, Lord, out of the disruption that this pandemic has caused, that you will build a resilient generation that will go on to learn from the mistakes of the generation before them and will build a better, more equal, more resilient world. I pray, Father, that they will not be anxious about the results that they will get, Lord. But they will, you will quieten their fears, that you will encourage them, Father. 
Pray, Father Lord, that you will protect the children as they return to school. You will protect the teachers and all the other workers who work in this education environment. We ask, Father, for those who this period has been difficult for them, catching up with others in terms of their studies, that you will help them to be encouraged to be able to catch up, Lord, and to be able to resume studies along with their friends. And that this pandemic will not create irreversible damage as far as their prospects and their academic careers are concerned, Lord. Father, we want to lift up those people in Latin America who have suffered greatly at the hands of the pandemic. So we do not know the true extent of the horrors that they face. We only hear anecdotal evidence, Lord, of families devastated by the virus, of bodies not being collected, health infrastructure at breaking point or completely non-existent. We pray, Father, for these people. We pray that you comfort them, that the pandemic will ease in these places, that the governments, not just of these countries, but from all over the world, will band together to help defeat the virus and defeat the effects of it as well, Lord. We pray for a sense of responsibility, for wisdom for the leaders of these countries and for the resources that they need, Lord, to be able to deal with the very real and ugly face of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lord. We pray for the safety of those who put their lives at risk on the front line to be able to deliver as much health care as they can in the most difficult circumstances with very little support. Pray for the doctors and nurses, the volunteers who come in from other borders, Lord, from other countries to help. We pray that you protect them. Father Lord, in this time of lockdown, people have had the opportunity to sit back and reflect and take notice of what's going on around them. And social justice is just one of those things, Lord, that has come to the fore. So as I said before, Lord, you turn everything to good. In the midst of this pandemic, we realize that we should look out for each other, that we should not accept the face of hate, social injustice, corruption, despotism, and all other evils, Lord, which are against your teachings. We pray for the people of Belarus who are demonstrating right now, Lord, about the outcome of the election there, where opposition people are being jailed, their families threatened with separation, children being threatened that they'll be taken to orphanages, spouses thrown in jail, and people being exiled for seeking to exercise their democratic rights. O oh Lord, would you look down upon Belarus in mercy? Would you, Lord, in your infinite mercy and power, resolve the situation in the country? May there be no bloodshed, but may there be justice and fairness. Lord, in other countries where there's crackdown, where authorities are trying to put the lid on any kind of dissent, we pray, Father Lord, that you will be the defender of those who have no defence. We think of places like Hong Kong, where people are having to seek other citizenships because of the new laws that have come into force there. We think about places, Lord, where speaking out is almost a death sentence, whether you're speaking out against the mismanagement or the maladministration of countries, or you're speaking out against governments just not doing their jobs. We pray, Lord, that you protect those who speak out. Father Lord, we also want to remember those who have lost loved ones in the past week, whether it's due to the virus or to other unfortunate incidents. We remember the victims of the derailment in Aberdeenshire, Pray, Father, Lord, that you comfort their families and that you give them the strength they need to go on. 
Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every week, we have a slot where we focus on the missionary work that we support uh, locally and internationally. So this week, Mark Smith is going to bring some information about Joe Sharples, who's a missionary in South Africa. Hi there, today we are going to be praying for Joe Sharples. Joe's provided a short video for us, so let's hear her now. Hi friends there at Crofton Park, hope you're all doing well. I gather you're having a bit of a heat wave. London's not the place to be when it's too hot, but at least you're having some summer and holidaying in the UK, I gather. Yeah, life has been busy here. I've been doing some geography teaching for a local uh, school, which only God knows the plans he has for us, eh? And delivering medication from the local hospital so people don't need to go visit the hospital. And um, yeah, delivering food parcels and doing various things from our local charity and to help out at church. So I hope that you are well. Keep well, keep me in your prayers. And uh, yeah, that the virus does go down in South Africa quite quickly, please. Thanks, Joe. Let's pray for her now. Lord, we thank you for Joe for her life and her witness within South Africa uh, in Cape Town. Lord, will you bless her uh, as she continues to work with young people teaching them geography online and as she's able to find new ways to help and support her community, whether that's delivering food uh, or supplies to local hospitals or to those in need in her area. We bless her in her life, in her witness and her roles within the, her church as she, uh, they continue to meet during this time of COVID uh, uncertainty. Lord, thank you that the situation in South Africa is stabilised and that infection rates are, are reducing. And Lord, will you that you know, will that continue to be the, uh, the, the case within that country? And Lord, we pray for the government of South Africa, that they will make good and wise choices and that they will uh, be able to in a, be in a position not to be swayed by, in, in, uh, by um, power struggles or infighting, but will be able to put the needs and the, of, their, of the communities within the whole of South Africa first. You will help them to be servants of their people. So Lord we put the country of South Africa, the town of the city of Cape Town and Joe and her life into your hands and into your prayers today. We thank you for for her this uh, on this Sunday. Thank you and bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you Mark. And now a few announcements. As mentioned last week in the newsletter, we won't be having a weekly uh, catch up on Zoom. Uh, we'll be taking a break from that for a while because the numbers have gone down. But if you are interested in joining a monthly catch up with a quiz, then please get in touch with Shola. Or if you don't have her details, you can email newsletter at croftonpark.org.uk and let us know if you will be interested. We're still preparing for a uh, possible reopening in September. As you can see behind me, there are no chairs in the hall. So thank you to all who were able to come along last Saturday to help with the clear out. You can still fill in the survey if you haven't done so. It'll be good to get everybody's opinions on how they feel about worship. And hopefully today's message might put that in a bit more of a positive light. For any more information, please, um, Subscribe to our newsletter. You can subscribe by clicking on the link on our Facebook page, or if you go to our website, there's a form in there you can fill in. And also, don't forget, you can continue to donate online, your offerings or tithes through the website. And now, I'm just going to say a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the message that we've heard today. And thank you for the stories we've heard of missionaries abroad, of how other people are going through difficult times, but still finding joy in the midst, Lord. We pray, Father, that this message will stay in our hearts, that whatever challenges that we face throughout the day, throughout the week, 
that we can remember, Father, that you are there for us in the midst of it all. And you never fail us. So as we pray together, Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us, protect us, encourage us and provide for us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week all.